This is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is the... Oh, you switched on me. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Featuring Black Friday deals with 10% discount on peripherals such as mice, mechanical keyboards and gamepads. And as usual with 25% off across several products when using my SKG discount code. Making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. And well, the RTX 4080 reviews just dropped out and NVIDIA pulled a <coughs> NVIDIA card, the well-known NVIDIA card, and they did shit. Mostly for consumers, as usual. And if you're already thinking of me as a fanboy... Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Well, I think of two things. Or you didn't see the actual value that they are charging for the GPU, or you're not actually seeing the performance charts, or you didn't see at all. And that's why you think that I'm a fanboy, but I'm not a fanboy. I'm just a normal human being with normal common sense that doesn't like to be ripped off by companies. That's what I am. As you know, the normal 80 series from NVIDIA were costing around $699, then they were raised to $799, so $699, then $799, then the price got maintained with $799 as well. But then NVIDIA just went nuts and they actually increased from $799 to $1200. Okay, it is a massive increase in price. And don't get me don't get me wrong because if if the, the 4080 was 799 as the previous generations, it would be a good deal. Not a great deal, but it would definitely be a good deal. But taking in consideration that it is actually twelve hundred dollars, it sucks. It's basically dead on arrival. It is dead on arrival. And why? Well, you can see, for example, this video from Gamers Nexus, uh, NVIDIA's lost it. I share the same opinion, of course. The RTX 4080 16 gigabytes GPU review and benchmarks. As you can see, this is one of them with control ray tracing. In terms of ray tracing, as you can see, even in terms of ray tracing where NVIDIA strives, the 4080 is barely faster than the 3090 Ti. It has less gigabytes, it has a new generation um, and it still performs only slightly better than the, for the 3090 Ti. So as you can see, the 3090 Ti, 47 average FPS and the 4080 with 51 average FPS. It's not, it's not anything that you can actually notice in normal gameplay. So it's, a, it's a, just a minor performance increase for a huge price increase. Now we can see other benchmarks, for example, 4K, 1440p benchmarks. Let's see, for example, another a heavier GPU title. Final Fantasy 17, 14, sorry, Final Fantasy 14, and Walker, 4K and the X11. At the X11, we see the, nine, the 3090 Ti doing 122 FPS, and we have the 4080 doing 100, 151 FPS. This is around like a 20% increase, a 20%, 25% increase in performance. So it's a huge, price increase for 25% increase in performance. So if you already have a, a 6950 XT, well, you, you won't get that much performance uh, just upgrading to a 4080. It's just a big buck for a mild performance increase, or if you have a 3090 Ti, even less. Okay, so it's insane. Now, if you go to the 4090, you do have 214 FPS, and that's a massive increase. And I repeat, that's a massive performance increase. Of course, the GPU price is even higher. It's insane. What the fuck? But it is definitely a huge performance increase. Going, for example, for uh, 1440p benchmarks, let's see, total Warhammer. On total, on total Warhammer, it is the same. The 3090 Ti, around 78.6 FPS, and we have the, um, the 4080 at 87 FPS. Okay, once again, just a mild performance increase for a huge price tag. If we go to hardware unboxed, the story is exactly the same, okay? 
Uh, for hardware and box, we can see Watch Dogs Legion, for example. The 6950 XT is actually a bit faster than the 3090 Ti, virtually the same, the results are within the margin of error. But then we have the 4080 going from 88 FPS or 86 FPS on the 3090 Ti to 110 FPS. And don't get me wrong because the 1% the lows also increase a lot. So we have more 1% lows on the 4080 than we have on average on the 6950 XT. And it is completely fine, but we can get a 3090 Ti or a, 60, a 6950 XT, we can get one for let's say like $850. For $850, we get a 6950 XT, and the prices will even drop uh, now that the new GPUs are getting released. But the 4080 has a price tag of $1,200, which in the real world will most likely be $1,500. And for this increase, once again, 25, 30% increase at max, which is not not acceptable for the price increase that we have on a new generation. It is a good generational bump, but it was a good generational bump in terms of performance if the price was the same, okay? Because the newer generations are supposed to be better than the older ones, uh, at the same price at least, or with a slight price increase. So hoping for a performance increase, it's normal. But hoping for a performance increase with a price increase uh, in the same level is not normal at all. That's not how things work. Because otherwise people will just keep buying the, the older generation cards because their prices will get lower and the, price per, and the price performance ratio will get better and better by the day. Uh, and this not being acceptable at all. On Rainbow Six Extraction, it is once again the same. The 4090 has a huge increase at 4K, very high quality, at almost 200 FPS, which is very, very good. The 3090 Ti has 125 FPS, which is just great once again. And the 4080 has 158 FPS, once again around the, from 20 to 30% increase, uh, which is not acceptable in my opinion. Um, it, it is, is just, just not, not acceptable. acceptable. And this even more because AMD is actually releasing their new card. So this card is dead on arrival. MSRP of $1,200 while we actually have uh, an increase of at least 50% in rasterization performance on the, on the 7900 XTX or the 7900 XT. Let's take, for example, uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. Okay, Rainbow Six Extraction. Let's see a game... Let me just see a game where we actually have results. Okay, let's see. Okay, the image is not opening. But in terms of rasterization, let's see what do we have. We have Watch Dogs Legion, okay? Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs Legion maximum settings with the 6950 XT. We have 68 FPS and here we have 88. Okay, so very high quality versus max settings. Okay, 20 average FPS difference. Now, uh, for the, um, the, the 7950 XT, we have 85, okay? So at the max settings, we have the same as very high settings on the, on the hardware and box benchmark. This is not a very, a, a very good performance uplift, I have to agree, but the, the 7900 XTX has 100 FPS, which is around a 50% increase. Okay, yes, 50%, 40% increase. Okay, Cyberpunk 2077, let's see the 4K results. 4K high quality, once again, it's ultra quality versus high quality. We have 49 FPS on the 6950, and we have 43 FPS. But on Cyberpunk, the, the rasterization increase is actually quite a lot. We have from 40 to 43 to 60, so we can actually agree that it would have like 65 or around 65 uh, here, yeah, 65 here. So 65 at $800 versus $1,200. Around the same performance as the 4080, agreeable, I believe, around the same performance as the 4080, but less power draw and at the same time, way, way cheaper. It's not even debatable. The XTX will be less expensive than the 4080 and will completely mop the floor with it. So. It's, it's dead on arrival once again. But well, we can argue that the ray tracing performance will be way better 
Well, not really. As you can see, even the ray tracing performance is just slightly better than the, um, than the 3090 Ti. So as we can see, ray tracing performance, 31 FPS versus 25 FPS on the 3090 Ti. Okay, slightly better with, of course, the 7950 XT doing only 13 FPS. And those same 13 FPS are presented on the results uh, given by AMD on their chart. So 13 FPS without the FSR on, okay, 13 FPS. Uh, at the same time, it is interesting to note that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is running high settings here, while on the AMD side they say they are running ultra settings, okay? So ultra settings with max ray tracing, which is... I, I believe that as soon as you go to ultra RT, the preset is different, so... I guess the settings are the same because the results are also the same. So the 4080 is having f a 31 average FPS with ray tracing ultra, while the 7900 XT is having 18 FPS, normal, it is way worse in terms of, of ray tracing, and the 6900 XTX is having 21 FPS. In terms of ray tracing, the, the 4080 is completely obliterating the, even the 7900 XTX performance according to AMD data. But there's an interesting scenario now. So using ray tracing and FSR, now, they do not state the FSR mode, though I wanted to see that, because they only say FSR on and FSR off, and that's quite of a bummer because we don't know if it, if it is FSR quality, FSR what, but at least we have the LSS quality on the 4080, and we do have 58 FPS, okay? 58 FPS, and at the same time we have 62 FPS and 57 FPS on the, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. If the FSR is on the quality mode here as well, the same for the LSS, this brings really, really interesting things. It means that the newer cards are way better at running the LSS. The LSS, not the LSS, they are way better at running the, um, the FSR, which seems to be the case because even though they have just slight a slight increase in terms of of normal fps they have a huge increase in terms of the the fsr performance meaning that those ai accelerators that they or the that ai performance increase that they proclaim is actually uh, working towards the the fsr performance increase which is which is interesting so as you can see we have 57 fps with 23 on hitman 3 but as soon as we go to 34 FPS without the FSR, we jump from 57 to 81 FPS with FSR, which once again is very interesting to note. Yeah. Now, in terms of total system power consumption, we have on Dying Light to Stay Human, we have a system power consumption of 400 watts, which is okay since the GPU will most likely be consuming around 300. Then we have uh, Doom, I believe, yes, Doom. On Doom, we have a total system consumption of 471 watts, which is just, uh, well, really, really close to the 3090, which is normal, I believe, okay, with a 7950XT still being a bit below, a bit over that with 512, although the, the 7950XT can easily get under volt and go to lower numbers than these that you see on the 4080. Still, doesn't really matter. Let's see if we have more results. Yes, we have Hitman 3 at 4K, where we also have around the 470 watts power consumption, total system power consumption, uh, with the 7950 XT being around the same as well, 517, and the 4090 being at 604. So, it seems completely fine, fine to me, okay? So overall, I'm just making this video to say that the 4080 is most likely dead on arrival, at least for me it is, because as you saw with the hardware unboxed video and the Gamer Nexus video as well, it is slightly faster than the 3090 Ti in terms of ray tracing performance and around 30% faster in rasterization compared to the 3090 Ti once again. Now, this wouldn't be bad at all if the pricing scheme was was uh, as it was before, around $700. If it was $700, maybe even $800, then it would be a very good deal. Not a great deal, but a very good deal. $700, $800, 
30% faster in raster, around the same 20, 15 to 20% faster in, ra in rate racing performance compared to the 3090 Ti. Great, with way lower power consumption. Great. But since we actually have a, a price a price bracket of $1,200, which will most likely be $1,500 $1, in the real world, but even taking into consideration the MSRP, the price increase is just insane. And as I told you before, the newer generations are supposed to be better inside the same price bracket. It's how it works. So you're not... Because if this continues, let's say that the next generation brings an uplift of 70%. So it brings another uplift of 70%. It has to be even pricier because it is faster. No, it just makes no sense. Otherwise, we would stop at $10,000 or $20,000 for a GPU because as soon as it gets faster, it also gets more expensive. It makes no sense, okay? It is supposed for the newer generations to be inside the same price brackets as the, the older ones while performing better. That's how it works. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Sorry for me just talking and talking and talking. I just wanted to explain the best way I could. And as you can see from Gamer Nexus and Hardware and Boxes video, uh, well, the performance is just, is just good. It is not great, it's good, the performance increase is good compared to the four, to the 3080 mostly. Uh, compared to the 3090 Ti, it is not that great, but it is expected, okay? A 4080 being 30% faster than the 3090 Ti is expected. But once again, if it was priced as the 80 series of the past generation, if it was priced $700 or $800, this would be an awesome card. But at $1,200, most likely $1,500 in the real world, it is dead on arrival. Even more with the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX just behind the corner. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the 4080 uh, and what you think that the, 49, the 7900 XT and the XTX will bring to the table because I really want to know your opinion on the matter. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.